Hello, let us talk about The Hunger Games, and uh, this is a very interesting uh, uh, sort of film experience, if that's the, those are the words I want to use, uh, because the build-up for this movie and the marketing for this movie isn't like something like one of the comic book movies out there, Twilight or something like that, where there's a lot backing the advertising, and everywhere you go, it's, you know, you see the title. Uh, this didn't have, like, a ton of advertising. I mean, it... It's there. I mean, you know, every once in a while you look around and you see a poster, but it, it was an extreme, and this got a huge following, though. This was, like, one of the hyped, anticipated films simply because of the following it had. Uh, and it has this really huge uh, teenage, or teenage and a little younger uh, following of people that love the books, and they got really excited for this movie, and... Everyone's saying this is going to be, like, one of the big hits. I mean, like, the one of the really, really big ones. Uh, so, uh, that's pretty interesting. It's very interesting for a film to be a hit just based off of word of mouth. Uh, you know, because it rarely happens. And when it does, you know, that's kind of cool. It's, like, how it should work. Um, but, okay, so with that said, let's actually talk about the film itself. Uh, I really liked it. I thought this was... I have to admit, the reason I probably liked it as much as I did, even though it's good, uh, I think I liked it even more for the fact that it was... It's a young adult book, and so therefore it's marketed mostly to uh, teenagers and stuff like that. I think that's why I like it as much as I do. If it wasn't, I'd like it, you know, it'd be good. But I think I like it as much as I do because of that. Because when you think of stuff coming out like... Twilight, Transformers, and stuff like that. Stuff that's obviously marketed to sort of teens and younger, but is obvious junk food. And junk food's okay every once in a while, but we love to feed it to, uh, you know, our younger people. Uh, so anytime something comes along that it's not only smart, but really treats its audience, especially its younger audience, like they know what they're talking about, like they're smart and they have a brain and they can comprehend tough stuff, and they can be challenged. I'm all for it. Uh, now, with that said, it can be very, very extreme uh, and very intense, which, when I was watching it, I didn't know what to think of it. I was like, well, geez, this is like a, a, a teenage book? I mean, really? But then again, I was thinking, well, I was a teenager. I was watching aliens and, and all that other violent stuff. I mean, this, this is nothing new. And the movie acts that way. It acts like, look, we know our audience. We do. And, you know, we're going to treat them like they're smart people who can take this stuff. You know what? They can. They really can. Uh, and we're going to treat our characters with this dignity, and we're going to treat our story with this dignity, and we're going to talk intelligent, we're going to uh, make the people sound intelligent, they are going to be intelligent, and we're going to create this world that's very fascinating and complex and uh, raises questions to younger people and stuff. So... Good for this movie. I mean, I, I really give it a lot of credit for that. Uh, the basic story, real fast, is that there's a uh, sort of this fu future Orwellian uh, uh, world where, you know, or sort of like Metropolis where you have, you know, the rich and successful, you know, are high up and living the glamorous life and the people down below, the less successful, are constantly being taken advantage of. And what they do, from what I was told, this is the only part where I got a little confusing, uh, is that in these districts of uh, people that are not very wealthy and uh, are constantly in control, you know, are being controlled by the richer people, um, they have, I guess the districts tried to uprise and they tried to have a rebellion and it didn't work. So as punishment, there's this game that uh, the rich people now play where every, every year they take like one young boy and one young girl from every district and they put them in this game where only one person can come out the, alive. It's pretty much like, you know, an arena, like gladiators and stuff like that. Just throw them in there, watch them kill each other. Uh, but just play to a very, <clears throat> you know, futuristic, technological, you know, extreme. You know, sort of like, uh, you know, like what we do today. Like American Idol, pretty much. Um, though they don't kill people in there. But wouldn't it be a more interesting show? I digress. Uh, so... And the, this girl and this boy get chosen from this district. And it's pretty much just following them, particularly the girl. And, uh, and just how they survive in the world that this is, and so on and so forth. So that's the basic premise. This world that they've created is nothing really that new. We've seen this kind of world before. I like to say there's even a term for it, sort of the Orwellian uh, world. You know, it's very... Uh, 
uh, late then, well, 1984, obviously, Brazil did this. Um, what the hell's the... Oh, I'm blanking on the name. The guy has the mask. Uh, everyone always quotes. I'm going to do an edit here just so I can think of the name. V for Vendetta. That was it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, I mean, we've seen these kind of worlds before where it's sort of like almost like the Nazis took over and there's a lot of control and stuff and the rich are glamorous and powerful and don't care about the, the poor and needy and blah, blah, blah. Or, uh, you know, so oh, we've seen this before, but what this film does different, and this is what I like, it updates it. And it also sort of mixes uh, the tr those traditional stories and sort of that traditional look. Like, this looks very much like Brazil. Uh, and, you know, with the very cold buildings, a lot of the gray and stuff like that. But it also updates it with, you know, almost sort of a satire of our technology today and our uh, shows today and stuff like that. The fashions of today. I mean, these are all very over-the-top, extreme fashions where everyone's trying hard, so hard to look so glamorous that they just look hideous. And I love that. Um, I love, they, they have a talk show talking to these kids before they go out and fight and how... And the kids are also learning how to be celebrities. I think that's a great update uh, to this kind of story. Um, you know, because that also can be very savage. And literally, the more sponsors they can get and the more people they can please, the better chance they have to literally survive. Not just in terms of a public image, but literally survive. I mean, that's, that's wonderful. Um, and everything sort of does look like this American Idol uh, setup. And, you know, people, even though these people are fighting for their lives, you know, people are talking about, you know, what they're wearing and stuff like that. It's just, that's great satire. And it's so current. It's so modern. And if there's anyone who can get that, you know, the teen audience really can. And I think this stuff does hit them, and they do get it. I think it shows with how popular the books are and how, what a big hit this movie's obviously going to be. I mean, why what there's a huge line to get in. Uh, you know, the sold-out show. So, um... So I really like it because of that. I like these characters are uh, are very good, um, and I guess in a sense, are sort of these archetypes you're used to. But there's much more humanity in these characters, and they pick good actors to play them. Uh, I mean, these could very easily be. I mean, this could just be a cardboard cutout. You know, the really tough girl, and even sort of the wimpy boy. But it's like, you know, the boy's not just a wimp. I mean, he actually is very strong, but he gets nervous, and he. Understandably so, he wants to survive. I mean, he's actually much like the other kids in this film. Uh, and the girl is very headstrong, you know, but she she doesn't know how to play to the crowd, and so she has to be taught that, you know, sort of a different way of survival, because she knows one way of survival. I mean, this, this is all very clever stuff and very smart stuff. Um, the adult actors are all great, uh, who live in this very, uh, you know, like I said, very creepy over-the-top future. If it is a future, I just realized, I don't know if it ever said the future, it could just be an alternate world, but, again, I digress. Uh, faults with the movie, it's, I think they're pretty minor, in my opinion, but it, it can get to some people. I mean, one is that it is constant shaky cam throughout the whole thing. There's very few shots that are just still or very slowly panning or anything like that. I mean, it's all shaky cam. But now the interesting thing about that is, well, for, shaky cam for the most part has not bothered me too much. Uh, except for one instance where I'll get to in a second. Uh, so literally when this film starts off, and I saw it in IMAX, the whole screen is shaking, I mean, like 90% of the time. But I found... I was actually sort of getting into that, and I think it's because a lot of times people are just standing around and not doing anything really action-oriented, and it did sort of create this unease. It sort of felt like you're just there sort of watching these people, and it did make it much more uncomfortable, which is what this film's supposed to be. It's supposed to be very uncomfortable and very intense. Uh, so I found myself actually sort of getting into the zen of the shake, if that's <laughs> a, a term, which I know it isn't, but uh, I started to get into it, Except for one thing, whenever they do the action sequences, guys, you gotta see the action. You can't... The... Okay, the purpose of action is to create suspense uh, that the character will get out, you know, or that there, there's a conflict or something like that. If you can't see any of that, then how can you get invested? You're just gonna be there confused. I mean, when someone comes up, you just see this the whole time. Maybe a person's face and then back to the... I, you can't get into it. You can't. The, the big fight scene at the end. I had no idea who was fighting who halfway through. I mean, I, I sort of took a guess because of how many were left. But, I mean, I was just like, okay, well, I'm assuming it's this guy. But I don't know. I can't see him. So that's, that's really annoying. Uh, but, again, for the rest of the shaky cam, and there are still shots. I'm like, they need to show the city. It looks very nice. And the, uh, 
you know, the great shots with, like, you know, the advertisers and the TV shows and stuff like that uh, all look great. Um, but, yeah, if you're not good at shaky cam, you really can't take that stuff, or you can't take Blair Witcher and so on and so forth, don't see it on IMAX. Uh, you're you're going to hurl. <laughs> you're going to have a real hard time. I can't imagine if this was in 3D. Oh, God. There's so many close-ups in this movie. You'd just be seeing, like, freckles this big. You know, IMAX 3D. I mean, it just would not, you know, jumping out at you. So it's probably good they didn't do this in 3D. Um, so what else? What else? Like I said before, the uh, it's very, very intense. Um, the violence, it's not gory, but, I mean, it's... You pretty much got... It's children killing children, essentially. I mean, some are teenager, teenagers, but others are like... You know, look like they're about 11 or 10 or something like that. So, I mean, it, it gets very, very extreme. Uh, so, keep that in mind. I mean, if you're just like, oh, this is a teen book. It'll be, you know, okay, maybe a little rough here and there. No, it, it they really treat this seriously, and they give it a lot of weight. And, again, good for this film. It's really taking a chance. I I would have no idea how to market this film if I was uh, uh, doing this. I mean, this is essentially killing kids the sport. <laughs> I mean, so how do you market this to people? I'm, again, I'm really impressed that this is, like, a, a series and, and a film series. It's going to be a film series uh, that really caught on. I'm really impressed by that. I think it's very cool that, the you know, there's a younger audience out there not that, that there's this smart, but there's this many that are this smart. I think that's awesome. Um, and that there's still film studios that will take this material and not dumb it down. Uh, I, I saw it with my brother who read the books, uh, and he says, hey, there's changes, you know, there's stuff he didn't like, but he says it, it was essentially the book. Uh, so it really wasn't dumbed down, it was done... Uh, it, it treats it all, its audience like it, it's very adult. It is long as well. Keep that in mind. Uh, the build up the, reminds me a lot of Full Metal uh, Jacket. It's very much the first half is just the build up. Then the second half is the actual game. I love that. I love good build up. I love. I mean, they <clears throat> do such a great job of making you feel the pressure that these kids are going to go through without even fully telling you what it is either, which I kind of like. I mean, so there's still a lot of secrets and so forth when you're going in. So this was a very smart, very well put together film. I think the people who wouldn't like it are probably people who couldn't handle the intensity because it is very intense, like I said. Uh, people who can't handle the shaky cam, there's a lot of that. Like I said, it sort of grew on me except for the action scenes, but uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind. That can get very, very annoying. Uh, and maybe people who are just sick of the, you know, the future that sucks, you know, because there are so many of those stories. And it's never going to go away. I mean, they're, they're cautionary tales. This is what our future can be. Um, but if you're sick of that story and you're sick of the rich people looking really glamorous and watching the poor people die going, oh, you know, you, you might not like this either. I think it's done pretty smart. I like it because it adds new things to it, and it updates it, and improves it in certain points. Uh, but there are people that can be really sick of it, and I can totally understand that, because we do have so many of these stories. Uh, but for my money, I really liked it. I I'm glad that teens are really getting into it, even though... I would usually say it's, like, too violent, you know, stuff, but I can't, it's not kids' kids. It it's teenagers, and this is when they're craving this stuff. They're craving the violence. They're craving all this stuff, and it's good if you're gonna have this stuff, have it for a reason, have it with ideas, have it with something that's gonna challenge you, you know, and don't make it glamorous, it's not glamorous, you know, when the hero kills, or heroes, kills somebody in this, you know, they're not like, you know, yeah, go hero, it's like, you're just sad that the person had to do that, I mean, because it's just kids killing kids, so, it's really well done, and I admit that the reason I like it so much is because of the audience it's geared towards, and it, if, if this wasn't the audience, I would still like it, but I wouldn't love it as much as I did, but because they are talking to the teenage demographic, and it's starring teenagers, smart teenagers, treating teenagers like they're smart, I really, really enjoyed this film, and it, it's, a very, it's a very adult film for younger people. I love that. So, guys, that's my two cents. I'll see you later.